What started as just an idea, then a dream, now becomes reality. Opera Orlando's first commissioned opera, The Secret River, based on the book of the same name by Marjorie Keenan Rawlings, with music by Stella Sung and a libretto by Mark Campbell, is truly a Florida story with deep connections to the Central Florida community. But it could have been something much different. We searched around and we thought about maybe um, Space Coast, we thought about Disney, we thought about Ponce de Leon, a whole bunch of different topics. And then one day a friend of mine said, oh, I just bought a book for my daughter and it's called The Secret River and it's by Marjorie Canan Rawlings. And so I knew Rawlings uh, as a child because I um, am from Gainesville, Florida and we would visit her home in Cross Creek. So I was familiar with her work already. But I did not know about The Secret River. So we bought the book, we all fell in love with it, and we said, this is it. This is going to be our new opera. The Secret River story inspired me in so many ways. I remember when uh, Stella and Gay brought the project to me. I didn't, I didn't find it. And they brought the project to me, and I read the book like in one sitting, which is a young adult book. It's easy to do. Um, but I was so inspired by this story of this African-American family in Central Florida just trying to get by during the Depression. I loved their strength, their resilience, their love for each other. That got to me first. Uh, I think another aspect of the story that I really keyed into was the portrayal of Calpurnia, the young girl, who um, is extremely resourceful, very smart, and um, finds a way through her imagination to help her family and her community. It's a beautiful story. It just, it just sang as operatic to me. And that aspect of the imagination, which really, I don't know for me, I work in opera, so maybe I'm partial. But for me, music really can capture that spirit of the imagination better than anything else. And that's why I think it works beautifully as an opera. So the story was chosen. The Secret River, written by acclaimed Florida author Marjorie Canan Rawlings, published posthumously in 1955. The story follows the journey of young Calpurnia, who hopes to help her family during the Great Depression in Florida. A story that Marjorie knew very well, given the many years she spent in Central Florida. Marjorie Canan graduated from the University of Wisconsin in 1918, and the very next year married Charles A. Rawlings, a newspaper man. She worked for a time as a reporter and a feature writer for the Louisville Courier Journal and for Rochester, New York newspapers while attempting to establish a career as a writer of fiction. She managed to sell a few stories, but it was not until her sudden decision in 1928 to buy a dilapidated farmhouse and a neglected grove near Cross Creek in North Central Florida that she began to find her literary voice. From her first visit to the region, she had felt herself attuned to the half-wild nature of the place and to the people who lived there. Her first book, South Moon Under, was published in 1933, followed by Golden Apples in 1935 and The Yearling in 1938. The Yearling won a Pulitzer Prize and remains her most popular book. Her 1942 book, Cross Creek, which was made into a movie in 1983 starring Mary Steenburgen, describes her life in the Florida country and displays her ability to convey in poetic prose her deep love of nature as well as her sharp ear for dialect and the characteristic regional humor. While Marjorie and The Secret River were certainly proven successes, how would the book fare as an opera? And how would the creative team adapt this story for the stage? In adapting uh, Marjorie Kanan Rawlings' uh, The Secret River into an opera, um, there, I wouldn't say there's that much different. It, it, you know, the, the basic characters are there, the basic plot is there. The difference is that it's an opera, so it expands the story. Because of the abstract quality of music, 
the, the um, magical part of the story has become more intense and I think more beautiful through Stella's music. Mark gave me a beautiful libretto and what is so interesting is he used a thread of Marjorie Canan Rawlings and our heroine Calpurnia and their love of writing. And so um, actually Marjorie Canan Rawlings was a poet herself and uh, our heroine is also a poet and so the thread between the two is connective and really helps to uh, bring bookend both of the uh, both the beginning and the end of the opera. So that's a little different than the story itself, but the essence of the story is is very much intact and focuses on imagination and community and family and all these wonderful things uh, that California goes through. Opera Lando just provided us with this wonderful process, uh, nurturing every step of the way. I think of this one moment um, in the story, it's rather early on in the story, and we came to the workshop and Stella had gone in one direction with her music and I'd gone in another. She was writing this beautiful like trio that could have been in uh, Rondine or, or, you know, like it could have been Puccini. It was so heartfelt and I was going into musical theater land and, uh, and she was right. She was absolutely right. Um, her sense that we needed to bring out the emotion of this particular moment was absolutely correct. So I just rewrote the lyrics to her music. Um, but you, a lot of operas, a lot of opera companies I've worked with, they don't necessarily provide that sort of step where you would begin to identify something's not quite working here. It always starts with intuition. Something's not quite working here. And then we all analyze it and we figure out that I was wrong, and she was right. But we don't use those words, um, but I was so happy to make um, what she had created uh, work with the words, um, and, and happy to rewrite the words. With the libretto and composer off to the races, the company set out to put together a production team to bring the score to life on the stage. Stage director Dennis Whitehead Darling and conductor Everett McCorvey were added to the team and they jumped right in. Thinking back on my initial attraction to this piece, I admired how forward thinking it must have been. The idea for The Secret River was born from something written in Rawlings' autobiography, Cross Creek, reading, Someday a poet will write a sad and lovely story about a Negro child. So to depict a struggling African-American family during one of the most economically challenging times in American history and present an artistic young black girl as its central character must have been groundbreaking. And to her credit, Rawlings told her editor she wanted to avoid the typical racist Negro dialect of the time. I can't help but wonder if Rawlings' interactions with people of color living in Central Florida, or her close relationship with an African-American woman, Beatrice, were the impetus for her writing a broader and more poetic depiction of a black family. For me, her book, The Secret River, gives me a glimpse into her character and ideally her passion for breaking social norms that marginalize people of color, a cause that's very close to my heart. What struck me about this production is the story of Calpurnia and using her imagination to solve problems and to solve the problem of her community. And it really brings us in as we, as an audience and as a company, use our own imaginations and really experience the creativity that happens when we use our imaginations to solve problems. It's also been a great joy to work with the Opera Orlando Youth Company, such amazing young musicians who are so committed to perfection and doing great things, and I'm so excited for them. And also working with Michelin puppets. These puppets are amazing, and I think anyone who sees them will just be in awe by the beauty of the puppets and what they have to offer to the production. I think our audiences will take an amazing journey with Calpurnia and the Secret River. In our beautifully written and scored setting of the Secret River, the core elements of the original story remain. However, 
more emphasis is placed on the familial relationship between Calpurnia and her parents, Cassandra and Augustus. And by developing these characters and their relationships, it takes us another leap forward in depicting a much broader vision of the African-American family through a more modern lens. And if I may, it adds richer color to a picture initially set in sepia tones. All the elements started to come together. Puppetry, set design, costume design, props, even a little toy dog made of sticks. Dancers, musicians. Of course, one main piece of the puzzle was assembling a stellar cast to really bring Marjorie's book to life, including the character of Marjorie herself. It was such a thrill to play a real person, and especially someone who is so admired in this area, who has a, a history here. And so knowing that people are gonna be coming to see this opera and already know about my character, I, that's very, that's fun for me. I got to do a lot of research. I even went up to Cross Creek and saw where she lived and it was obvious why she cared so much about this area. And you can certainly see the love she has for this part of the country, this part of the state, and for the people that she lived with during the happiest years of her life. And that love comes through this story. It's a, a hopeful story about resilience and about uh, using what you have to help those around you. And she had a great love for these people and she saw that they existed during these terribly difficult times and they never gave up and they didn't complain. And she had always wanted to write a story about the people that, um, that she saw through these difficult times. And that's what we have here in the Secret River and a story for children, for the young at heart and uh, anybody who needs a little bit of hope. I love playing Calpurnia because uh, she and I are very similar. Um, she's a writer, she's a poet, and I love writing as well. Writing to me is very cathartic and it also um, keeps your creative juices flowing. What I want audience to take away from this particular character is that, you know, each and every one of us have gifts. We all have been given gifts and talents, and it is our responsibility to develop those gifts and talents. And when a, pr a problem is presented to us, we're able to use our gifts and talents to solve that problem. So in a situation like what's happening in our climate now, we can legitimately turn our hard times into soft times, just like Calpurnia did. I had an opportunity to do an outreach performance of this production, but it was actually more reduced. So we actually uh, per performed um, in front of two different groups of uh, kids. We have a younger kids, and then we have kind of like the sixth and fifth graders. So they're a little bit more quiet, but they were excited. And what I really enjoyed about that particular um, experience was that they were just so elated with the storytelling. Now, in our production, there, we actually have a youth company on stage, and it's really cool to be able to interact with the kids. And what I find really important is that to be able to have an opera where you have kids themselves on stage actually doing opera themselves, it really just sparks the imagination in the audience. So they're just like, oh my gosh, there's kids on stage. I, I want to be able to do that. Working with the youth company has been absolutely great. Uh, they are eager to learn and incredibly energetic and have been so much fun to work with. Um, they are incredibly smart. They probably have some of the most challenging music uh, in the entire score uh, and have been so well prepared. Uh, by their chorus master, Robin Jensen. Um, and I think it's great that Opera Orlando um, incorporates the youth company, mm -hmm. you know, to, for them to start as an early age um, in this, this music business of opera. <laughs> the most exciting thing about this piece um, is that it, it brings together the fact that we are seeing a bit of a change um, in that this is a piece written by a female composer and with a majority female cast. Mm -hmm. This is something that has not happened in opera very often um, and still to this day doesn't happen very often. I can't even count on one hand how many female composers uh, living um, that there are. So it's, it's pretty unique and special uh, that we get to uh, be a part of that. And I think for people of color, um, it's, it's been a great honor to work with the cast and uh, represent you know, such a special story on stage.
you know, we don't get to do that as often. Um, so, and also just, just being a part of the groundwork. You know, um, yes. I was here in April to do the workshop and, and so to kind of see even from April where it has evolved, it's been, you know, a nice process to, to be a part of. This story is so important in the world of opera because it's so real. It's, some, it's a story that anyone can relate to. Um, it's so relevant right now, um, what, we're going, what we're going through right now um, globally in the world. Um, this story res will resonate with everyone. Um, and so it's really important that our art reflects you know, what's going on. Um, and that this story does that. It's been a really big honor to tackle this character. Uh, Mother Alberta is the kind of character that I strive to be in my personal life, and uh, she's a wonderful role model and for anyone to look up to. Um, she brings such a strong message of, of hope and just encouragement for anyone. The music that's been written for Mother Alberta, I think, makes it even um, even easier to, to dig into who she really is. The music is perfect for, um, for this character, and Stella has done such a, a wonderful job at um, painting this character through the music. Uh, so bringing her to life has been a true honor, and I cannot wait for the audience to experience it. So the stage is set. All the elements have come together. Now our actors wait in the wings, ready to ascend. Here we are. It's opening night for the Secret River. So I'm going to climb on up and get closer to the high notes. Or ready to wake up and start their new day. Well, here I go for the world premiere. Each new day is a reason to sing. Here I go. The curtain opens on a new opera born right here in Central Florida, about Central Florida with a universal and timeless message for us all.